Oh, and my God, I want to thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will keep, will keep you. Sister Betty, she's the Jewish sister that's normally here. She's not here today. She always said the Holy Ghost is the goods. She said, I can tell when you have the goods. The Holy Spirit is the goods. The Holy Spirit will keep you from cussing. Oh, come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit will keep you from watching pornography. The Holy Spirit will keep you from being nasty in church and outside of church. The Holy Spirit will keep you from drinking vodka and coke when you want to cruise and ain't nobody around. I want to thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost today. Amen. I also want to thank the Lord for my pastor. By the way, I am not the pastor of this church. Amen. I'm not the co-pastor of this church. We don't have a co-pastor. We have a cat pastor. I'm not the co-pastor of this church. And for those of you who know me, you know I mean that. Amen. Because that's a calling and that's a, a work that you don't take lightly. You don't slide into that and you don't. I'm, I am the assistant pastor, which means I assist the pastor. I assist him vacuuming the rugs. I assist him cleaning the toilets, amen. I assist him answering the phones. I assist him with emails when I figure out how to work the email. I assist him with reading the scripture and praying the prayer, amen. I assist him with missions working, administrative working, all of those things. I assist cutting the grass. I used to assist playing the drums. I was the drummer, amen. I used to assist being an usher on the door. I was the usher, amen. So I assist the pastor. Now you can call that whatever you want to call it, but always find yourself in the house of God assisting somebody. Assisting somebody, doing something. You know, the title of what you do will change because those are titles, but the work doesn't change. Amen. So I want to give honor to him today. He's also, by the way, my husband. For those of you that don't know that, and we've been hanging out for 27, it's been 27 years? We've been married for 27 years, and I think we've been hanging out around 30. You say, where you found him? I found him in the club. That's where I found him, amen. This was before Christ. I found him in the club. I was standing on the wall, and he came cozied up next to me, and, and then somewhere between it, about six months later, he got saved, and I got saved, and the rest was history, amen. So good things can come out the club, amen. I'm just keeping it real. That's where we met. That's where we met. And I know some of you got that same testimony. Praise God for you. Some of us met in a baptismal pool. That's not my testimony. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for him. And for all of you that are watching online, I want to thank the Lord for you as well. I want to thank God for all of you that are wearing your mask. That is so very important because it allows us to have in-person service. Amen. Thank you for wearing your mask. I know it's a little warm in here, so if you get, you can't breathe, take it down for a minute and breathe. We'll put it back up. That allows us to come together as a body of Christ and worship and forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. And I thank those of you that are homesick perhaps, or you're just being cautious and careful and watching online, I want to thank you for joining us online because I'm going to tell you sometimes watching online can be a difficult thing. You just need to come back in and get a little church sometime but I, and then you step back. But I want to thank all of you that are watching online from home. Amen. Today I will be ministering from the book of Haggai. So if you will turn to the book of Haggai, the first chapter... I want to thank the Lord for my, my babies over there, those musicians. Aren't they a blessing? Isn't it nice to come in a service and you can worship God, particularly if you've been watching home for a long time, and for the AV team, making it possible for us to even have live stream services. I want to thank the Lord for them. This is my plug for them while you're turning to the book of Haggai. If you are sitting in this audience, particularly if you are a young person, and you may not know audiovisual, but you want to support with audiovisual, and you say, you know what, I want to learn how to work the camera and do slides and, and do all that stuff, whatever they do. I barely know how to do email. But you want to do that? We want to help you do that because we need help. So if you're interested in that, please, please 
come to Pastor Robinson after today's service and he'll get you connected with our audio director. And you don't have to have audio experience, but if you do, we're really looking for you. Amen? Amen. So I want to say that. So the book of Haggai. If you're there and perhaps you are uh, um, using your phone or an old traditional Bible like I have, whatever you're using, that's fine. And today I want to talk to you a little bit, all right? Because I have on this hot sweater and I'm a little warm, so I'm gonna, I want to talk to you a little bit. Let's open up in the Word of God. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you, O oh God, for your presence. Lord, I want to thank you for being in the service. Lord, I want to thank you that I'm here today and I can lift my hands and I have breath in my lungs that I can praise you for myself, that no one has to do it for me. Lord, perhaps that, there will come a day when that won't be the case, but today, Lord, while I'm in my body and I have all the faculties of my limbs, I want them to belong to you, O oh God. Lord, I want to lift you up, O oh God, with my voice and with my hands. Lord, I'm asking, O oh God, that as we go through the word today, that you anoint the word of God, and Lord, that you bless the hearers, the doers. Lord, allow the word to fall on good ground. Let not the enemy come and pull the seed up out, O oh God. But Lord, let it yield forth fruit as you intended. And Lord, send your Holy Spirit to save. Send your spirit to deliver. And Father, all praises will be to you who's the King of kings and the Lords of lords. The church said amen. As we read through the book of Haggai and also through the book of Ezra, I want you to be mindful of two things. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament books, typically, and a lot of times, it is a physical representation or account of what will happen or is happening spiritually. Okay, because the Old Testament would point us to the New Testament, to the coming of Christ. And so in the Old Testament, we saw a lot of spiritual battles and spiritual warfares. But in the, I'm sorry, physical battles and physical wars, David was fighting Goliath and Israel was taken into captivity and there were wars and wars. But a lot of that was also mirroring or pointing to the spiritual battles that were going to happen in the New Testament. So we know now that our warfare is not carnal, but it's what? It's spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds. So a lot of battles that we face today are spiritual battles. Would everybody agree with that? Amen. The enemy wars with us in our minds. So as we read the book of Haggai, I want you to keep in mind that also... There's a lot of double referencing going on. So, so in the, the scholar world, they call it the law of double referencing. So the scripture may be talking about two things at the same time. That's what that means. The scripture may be a- applicable to two things at the same time. So keep that in mind as we read, okay? So I'm going to read the scripture first, and then we'll go back and we'll look at what that means. Amen? So in the book of Haggai, if you are there, I want to start, well, I guess I'll start in the first verse. It says, in the second year of King Darius, year of Darius the king, and in the sixth month, and in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel. Now, Zerubbabel was the governor at this time, okay? Keep in mind that he was the governor. Think of Governor Northam of Virginia. He's the governor of the land of Judea. So the, the prophet, Haggai, is the prophet. So Haggai is a, is a person that in today's ministry would be a pastor, would be an elder, would be someone commanding the pulpit, preaching or teaching. It could be someone in the audience, but it's a man or a woman of God who the Lord has given the word of God to, to come in and to encourage the people, like hopefully what I will do for you this morning. So Haggai is the prophet, and Zerubbabel is the governor, okay? 
And so Haggai comes in and he prophesies to Zerubbabel, and he also prophesies to Joshua, the high priest. So Zerubbabel is the governor, and Joshua, Pastor Rob, is the high priest, the priest or the pastor of the house. You got the picture? So you got a prophet that's coming in, and he's prophesying to the governor, he's prophesying to the pastor, and he's prophesying to all these people that are listening of the house, okay? Verse 2, here's what the prophecy said. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. So the prophet is saying, The people are saying, you guys are saying, I'm trying to make this real, so when you read the scripture, you have to put yourself in the scripture so you can get something out of it. And I promise you, when you read the scripture, there's something in it for you. There's something in it for the pastor. There's something in it for everybody, wherever you sit in the house of God, wherever you're watching online, there's something in it for you. So the people, you guys are saying, it's not time to build the house of the Lord yet. So the prophet discerned that. The prophet discerned that the people were not interested in rebuilding the house of the Lord. Well, why did the house of the Lord need to be rebuilt? Well, here's the backstory, because you know there's always a backstory, right? So here's the backstory. Jerusalem, or the Israelites, that's y'all, they had been in captivity at this time, or just coming out of captivity, for 70 years. They had been in a 70-year captivity, which means at least two, if not three generations of Israelites were in captivity. So what that means is you is one generation, your son is another generation, and your grandchildren grew up in this captivity. And the reason they were in captivity is because they elected not to regard the things of God, the house of God, the people of God, the commandments of God, the statues of God. As I say back home, they were huckabucking in the street. Y'all know what I mean? When they should have been in church, they were in the club. When they should have been worshiping, they were smoking weed. When they should have been um, um, giving themselves wholly over to God, they were in idolatry and serving other gods, and they were just doing what they wanted to do. They had a form of godliness because they knew the ways of God, but they denied God. They denied the things of God. They denied the words of the prophets in the house of God. So the God said, okay, have your way. Do that. So God turned them over and he removed his hands off him. He removed that hedge of protection about them and he allowed them to be captive by another king because they didn't want to regard God as their king. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so let me explain something to you. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. You always serving somebody. Y'all hear what I said? You are always going to serve somebody. And if it's not a false god, if it's not alcohol, if it's not uh, idol worship, if it's not pornography, if it's not drugs, if it's not sin, sometimes we become a god unto ourselves. But you are always going to serve somebody. And if I can encourage you, let that somebody be God of heaven. Amen? So the Lord took the hedge of protection around about them and allowed them to do what he wanted to do because he's not the type of God that's going to make us do anything. But how many of you know there are always uh, ramifications to whatever we do? There are always consequences to whatever we do, good consequences and bad consequences because that's life. We're not going to change God. So they, they're in this captivity for 70 years, and while they're in captivity, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he came in and he destroyed the temple. He took the gold out of the temple. He took the silver out of the temple. And by the way, this was Solomon's temple, the temple that Solomon had built, and there had never been a temple like it, and there will never be a temple like it until Jesus comes and establishes his kingdom on earth. So they destroyed Solomon's temple. 
So not only were they in captivity, but their worship was taken away. Now you see how we can come in this morning and we can freely worship. We have a house of God that we can come to and worship. We have a place we can send our children to. We have a place that we can be baptized. But there are people on the other side of the world that can't freely worship like we're doing today. They're worshiping underground in houses because it is a crime to worship the true and the living God. It's a crime to have your Bible. It's a crime to have a Bible app. Not only will you be arrested, you will be killed, and I'm talking about in 2022. So when did all of this start? It start when they had no regard for God. So since they had no regard for God and the house of God and the things of God, the king came and tore down the temple. So now... They're returning from exile, 70 years in bondage. When they went, they were known as Israel. When they came out, they were known as Jews. Before the, ex before the captivity, they spoke the Hebrew language. Now they speak a Arama a Aramaic language. So they had changed all of this captivity. When you've been bound in anything for a long time, can I get a witness? It will change you. If you've been in jail for a long time, jail will change you. If you've been bound by drugs for a long time, it will change you. It changes your personality. It changes who you are. Alcohol changes you, saints. Sin changes you. The club changes you. So when they came out, they were changed. So you have this new king that comes in. Here comes Darius. And oh, by the way, actually his name was Cyrus. Cyrus, for those of you that remember Esther, that was her boy. Cyrus was King Esther's son. So Cyrus said, listen, he comes in, he overthrows the Babylonian Empire, and he tells all the Jews, he said, all of you that desire to go back to Jerusalem, you're free to go. He let the exiles free. And I want to tell you this morning, all of you that desire to serve the true and the living God this morning, you're free to come. You're free to serve God. This is a place of freedom because the Bible says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I want to tell you, you can make today the day that you choose to come out of exile. So he said, all of you are free to go back home. He said, not only are you free to go back home, he said, when you go back home, because the first thing you do with your freedom is you want to establish worship. He said, when you go back home, I want you to build a temple to God. He said, and don't worry. He said, I'm going to help you build the temple. He said, because all the stuff that the old king stole out of the temple, the gold and the silver and the jewels, he said, I have it and I'm going to give it back to you. Can I tell you this morning, everything that you lost in sin, when you come back to Christ, Christ has the ability to restore what the canker worm has eaten. He said, I'm going to return the gold and I'm going to return the silver. He said, I'm going to give you resources and I'm going to give you money to help build the temple. But they were responsible for doing it. Amen. So now you got the backstory. So what happens is, just imagine this. Once they get back to Judea, they needed time to establish their homes and they needed time to establish their communities and God gave them that time. Because when you come out of captivity, I want to tell you, when you come out of sin, God will give you a little what? He'll give you a little time. See, people will tell you when you get set, everything don't change overnight for everybody. When you come out of sin and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he will give you time to fix the housing condition you're in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He'll give you time to stop shacking. He'll give you time to, to come up out of that. When you come out of sin, what you'll find is you no longer will start desiring to go to the club like you used to go. Because every time you come to church, you'll be like, you know I shouldn't have been there last night. Okay, let me, let, let me talk about it, because remember I told you I met him in the club. So after I got saved, my girlfriends weren't saved. And so I, I, 
I really didn't desire to go in the first place before I got saved, but you know how we do, right? So they was like, come on, come on, Jay, they called me Jay. Come on, Jay, we, we going to the club. I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to go to no club because I'm at Beacon Light on Sunday <laughs> banging a tambourine and I'm lifting my hands in worship. I, go to no club. Then I got to find club clothes. Oh, come on, somebody. I got to find club clothes. Then I got to find club shoes. Then I got to get a club attitude. Because you know when you go in the club, you got to go in with a club attitude. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's work going to the club. I ain't talking to the old people because they, they ain't been in the club. Y'all, come on. It's work going to the club. So, so I, w- I went to the club. Now, remember, I got saved now. I'm, I'm in Beacon Light, Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church on Sunday mornings. So I went to the club, and I'm feeling all uncomfortable. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit will make you uh, squeamish. He, he will make you in that seat on that wall listen to R. Kelly. R. Kelly was in the club when I was in the club. I don't know who's there now. But listen to R. Kelly talking about bump and grind? I said, oh no, I can't do this. I can't do this. And then I had the kind of friends like, girl, you went, you going to church on Sunday? And you were with, I said, oh, they ain't going to make no monkey out of me. I ain't going no more. But the spirit, the spirit gave me time. The spirit helped me because what happened now that the Holy Spirit who lives in my spirit and lives in my mind, every time I brought him to the club with me, it made me feel uncomfortable. And he would not condemn me. He would convict me to say, you no longer have to live this life anymore. And then when I looked around, because this is what the spirit will do. I'm standing in the corner. And I'm looking around, and the Spirit said, what you going to do with him? You don't want him. He got a woman. He running drugs. He he playing this. And then it's smoke, and I don't smoke, and I go home smelling like smoke. My new dude that I had to pay to go to the club, now my hair smelling like smoke. My clothes smelling like smoke. My car smelling like smoke. And smoke makes me sick. So the spirit made me look at my environment and say, you in there, and I couldn't dance, dance. You know what I mean? Like nobody wasn't going to pull me on the side and say, come be on a BET video. I couldn't dance. So the spirit said, girl, get this up. Go on to church and be saved. And I want to tell you, give it up. Just go on to church and be saved. Just go on to church and be saved. But God will give you time. And if y'all will tell the truth, he gave you time to come out of fornication. He gave you time to come out of adultery. He gave you time to come out of witchcraft. He gave you time to come out of pornography. God will give you time. So now, let's go back to the Jews. These people come, they're now delivered. They got to learn how to act. They got to learn what to do. Because remember, they did not have a temple to go to. These people ain't been to church in 70 years. Three generations, Sister Jackson. They had not been in what they call a house of worship. They don't even know how to really do that, especially the young ones. Let me encourage your parents with something. Keep your kids in the house of God. Even if you ain't serious yet, you just keep coming and come for your kids and keep your kids in the house of God. Because what will happen is when God calls their heart, he has something to call them to. But if you don't have a place for them to go, if they don't have Jesus in their life, when they're looking to run to somebody, they don't have Jesus to run to because they've never been exposed to Jesus. Introduce Jesus to your kids and to your grandkids and to your neighbor's kids. Give them a fair start so when, when, when the captives set them free, they don't go to another God, but they come running to the true and the living God. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah, because when the Lord set me free, I came back to the true and the living God. So 70 years had passed by. Now, this is where they made their mistake. They come in, 
They get delivered from Babylon. They're going to Jerusalem to establish things. But instead of building God's house, because you want to make the Lord priority, your priority, they focused on building their own house. And God gave them time to do that, but 16 years later, guess what they were doing, saints? They were still building their own house. They were still focusing on their own works. So let's go back. Now let me, let me show you what happens when we don't make God a priority in our life. Verse 3, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He said, you have so much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. That's why there's never enough. That's why no matter what you buy, no matter what you spend, no matter what job or education you do or you try to accomplish, it's never enough. And it feels like although you've done it, you're putting your money in bag with holes because you know why? They come pick up your stuff. You say, who's they, cops? Cops come pick up your stuff, the cable bill, $300 cable bill. Pick up your money. It's a bag with holes. It's nothing of value. It's no eternity. I'm trying to help you. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Bible says, all these things will be added unto you. If you would just make Jesus the head of your life, if you would make God the priority, if you would make the house of God and the things of God and say, Lord, here I am. What can I do? I'm telling you, God will bless your coming in and you're going out. God will bless your fields. He will bless everything you put your hands to. Like the young girl who had been sitting in my church trying to get in medical school for six years, but she kept God as the head of her life. And lo and behold, not only did she get in school, but God paid for her to go. Now, can I tell you about something about that young lady? Because I'm one of those people I also count money and do reports. She will faithfully pay her tithes off of her little, her $14, her $17, her $140, her $200. Just all you have to do is be faithful with a little. The Lord is not asking you to be perfect, but he is asking you to have a heart to start. So no matter what they did, it wasn't enough. Verse 7. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He said, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. He said, and I will take pleasure in it and I'll be glorified, said the God. But they, God was asking them to reestablish worship in the land and build the house. Here's the law of double references. So not only was God asking them to build a physical house, but he was also asking them to build up their what? Spiritual house. And I want to encourage you this morning to build the house, to build your spiritual house. I want to encourage you to start praying and start fasting and start reading your Bible and start paying your tithes. Listen, people don't like this kind of teaching, but it's called sound doctrine. And I'm telling you, when you get in a valley, you will have some sound doctrine and the word of God will keep you grounded. He said, consider your ways. Consider all of the things that we're pouring into. Oh, my God, we do our hair, we do our nails, we buy cars, we buy video games, we buy liquor, we buy all of these things. God is saying, consider your ways. Right? So this is what he goes on. He said, verse 9, you look for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, he said, I did blow on it. Oh, my God. He said, when you brought it home, when you brought it home, he said, I did. I did it. I blew on it. He said, why, said the Lord of hosts? 
He said, because of my house, that is waste. And ye run every man to his own house. Drop down to verse 11. He said, and I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and the new wine, and upon the oil, and all that the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Do y'all see where we are now? God has caused for a drought. People say, that ain't God, don't tell me it ain't. Don't tell me it ain't. He said, even the labor of his hand, you go to, you go to Chick-fil-A today, you're going to stand in the line longer than normal because they don't have enough employees. You go to a restaurant to eat because people don't have the mind to work. You know why they don't have the mind to work? They say, because although I'm working one job and two jobs, it's still not enough. I'm working three and four jobs. It's still not enough. I buy, but everything I buy is not enough. I, everything I put my money into, the Bible says it goes into a bag with holes. He said, because I blew on it. Just in case you didn't know what happened, he said, I blew on it because we wouldn't repay our tithes. We wouldn't serve in the house of God. We wouldn't acknowledge the things of God. We wouldn't acknowledge the people of God. We wouldn't give. We wouldn't give ourselves over to God. He said, but if you want to cut off the drought in your life, the world can be in a recession, but you won't be in recession. He said, your barns will be full. Your cupboards will be full. The new wine will be full. Corn will be full. Although we are in the midst of a reception and a pandemic, it's like the blood of Jesus is on the door portal of our house. The death angel has passed over our homes. Don't tell me God won't do it. God will lift up a standard for his people. God will fight our battle. The Bible says he is the victory. We have the victory in the Lord. Let me tell you. The prophet said, if you want to know why, you don't have enough. Because you didn't give God what belongs to him. If he said, if you want to know why, there isn't enough. He said, you doing stuff in your own house but won't even pick up a vacuum cleaner in my house. He said, if you want to know why there's a drought in the land, he said, I did it. I did it. Stop being mad with the president. Stop being mad with the governor. Oh, stop being mad with the, the mayor. He said, I did it. Come talk to me about it. Ain't nobody going to talk to God if I were you. What I would do is say, what it is that you want me to do? How you want me to do that thing? I don't need nobody listening. If they would let me sing on the praise team, I would. Because they need help. But since I can't sing, you know what I do? I vacuum and I whistle while I work. Since I can't sing, I clean toilets, amen. I mop and I sweep, preach, prophesy, and pray. Because that's what the house of the Lord needs. Oh, I know this ain't no, no jump over me sermon. But you can't, you can't shout over all that stuff. Come on, somebody. You can't shout over everything, saints. We just can't clap our hands and bang a tambourine and say amen. God said, let me help you get this right, the right way, if you want to be blessed. I wish I could tell you my testimony. I just can't. I wish I could tell you what God has done in a drought, in a national pandemic. I just can't. But that, Brother Danny, you do bear witness. I, I, just, I just can't tell it because it would seem like I'm bragging. And y'all wouldn't give God the glory for it. But I want to tell you, if you consider your ways, if you consider your ways, God will take your little and he will make it much and he will be with you and he told them this not to scold them and to make them feel bad this word is not to scold you and it's not to make you feel bad but it's it's, it's designed to bring you into a reality because many of us are living in virtual reality many of us are living in a dream but God says Here, here's the why so go on and read, and I want you to see something. Verse 12, then Zerubbabel, the governor, 
and Joshua, the son of Jodesh, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people. And I love how it says remnant because it wasn't a lot of people. This wasn't for everybody. But the remnant of the people, this is what I failed to tell you, when they left captivity, see, everybody's not going to want to come out of captivity. Everybody is not going to want to come out of the world. But it was only a small remnant of people that left captivity. The rest of them stayed at this time. So it was only about 50,000 when you go read in other parts of the Bible that came. It said they did what? Obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. Now what's key in this scripture said they obeyed the voice of the Lord, they obeyed the words of the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. Right? What I'm reading to you today is the word of God. And I am standing in the office of a prophet because the Lord has sent me to share his word. These are his words, not mine, right? Amen. Verse 13, then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, this is what the Lord says, and this is what I want you to know today as we close. I am with you, said the Lord. Yes. To every one of us, that is seated in the house of God this morning and to those of us that are watching online. He said, I am with you. Despite all of this, remember these people, let me tell you how kind and how compassionate our God is. He knew, that's good Marvin, keep playing. He knew that they had been in captivity for 70 years. He knew that their worship had been taken away for 70 years. He knew that their children and their children's children didn't even know anything about worship. He knew that rebuilding after Solomon's temple was, was overwhelming. If you've ever been left out of captivity and you have to go start your life all over again, any of you had to do that? You had to start life all over again. God gave them time to set up their communities and find jobs. He gave them time to build their homes and decorate and furnish their homes. But time had gone down and apathy had set in. And you know your old ways, because remember they had been in captivity for how long? 70 years. So the Lord, they didn't have a temple that they were going to. So the Lord had to send a prophet and say, listen, let me tell you why you're not prospering. Let me tell you why your money's going into holes and the car's broken and the kids are broken and the washing machine is broken and the dryer's broken and then once you get it fixed, it breaks again. Let me, let me tell you what's happening. He said, I did that. He said, but let, if, if you would just come back to me, said the Lord. He said, if you would just rebuild your spiritual house, if you would just Put your hands to something in the house of God, in your local church or ministry, wherever you are. He said, and by the way, I want you to know you're not doing this alone. He said, I am with you. Amen. He said, I'm with you, Andrew. He's with you. He's with you. God is with you. Josh, for bringing your friends, God is with you. Nolange, God is with you. Then he goes on and he tells him in verse 14, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jodesh, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. The Lord this morning is stirring up your spirit to come back to him. Let's stand. He's stirring up your spirit to come back to him. He's pulling on your heart. He's pulling you back. He says, time to get back to praying in the house of God. It's time to get back to praying in your living room this morning. It's time to get back to reading your Bible. It's time to get back to 
getting your kids and your grandkids in church. It's time to get back to that. I'll help clean the, the vacuum. I'll vacuum and I'll mop and I'll wash and I'll serve. It's time to get back to that. The Lord says so there will not only be meat in my house, but meat in your house. See, if you mind the things of God, the house of God and the people of God, he will add the increase. So the Bible says he stirred them up. And I'm just read you, just listen. Then he said, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Right, he was talking to the elders. Rashida, you're left among them that Hallelujah. saw the house of God in his first glory, right? Yes, Sister yes. Debbie and Sister Maya and Denise. Education. Yeah. You are left among the people that saw gates of heaven. Yeah. Brother Danny and Sister Jessica. He said, oh, by the way, Sister Linda, man, he said, who's left among you that saw her house in the first glory? He said, how do, it see, how do you see it now? Is not your eyes in comparison of it? It's nothing? He goes on to say, now yet be strong, Zerubbabel, said the Lord. And be strong, Pastor Rob. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord. He said, for I am with you, the Lord of hosts. Sister Rashida, be strong. Yes. For the Lord is with you, said the Lord of hosts. Sister Barbara, oh my God, be strong. Sister Janice Calderon and some of the saints that are not here watching online. And Sister Finley, be strong, said the Lord of hosts. And Pop Robinson and Mom Robinson and David, be strong, said the Lord of hosts. Yes, yes. According to the word that I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. See, when you come out of sin, when you come out of the world, the Lord will break, make a covenant with you. He said, according to the word that I will covenant with you when you came out of Egypt. He said, so my spirit remaineth among you. He said, fear not. He said, because I'm going to shake a few things. All right now. Serve a few things. Right. He said, but don't let that dismay you. He said, just stay still and fear not and build. Build your spiritual lives first. Build the church of God in your local city. And God said, and watch. God sent the drought. He said, I lift my hands and pour out the windows of heaven that you have not room enough to receive. He said, and I will bless your children and your children children. You will need a job to send your kids to college. He said, because I'll, yeah. I'll make a way and I'll open doors. He said, you will need a retirement to save. He said, brother, man, I'll send you. I'll fix it. He said, I am God. All you have to do is care for the things of God. The house of God. Obey and follow me. Elder Dobie, he's going to bless your girls. You know why? Because you've laid a foundation. You've laid a foundation for them. All you have to do is continue to do what you are doing. Keep your eye on Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things that you desire for your girls and for your children and your children's children, Brother Tony, the Lord said he'll add that unto you. Now, if you're here in the house of the Lord or you're watching online and you say, you know what? And you're like me that Sunday morning at Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church that I, after I had come out of the club. I had met him, but after I come out of the club. You see how God will get, he'll fix that thing and make it all right? If you're here this morning and you want to be saved, or you're watching online and you want to be saved, and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, this is not embarrassing. This is something we all did and desired to do. But if the enemy is pulling on you and say, no, don't do it right now, that's the devil. You're amongst the people of God. Why not? I tell you, you can have a new start today. Just stay wherever you are, to your left or to your right. If you say, I want to, I, I've never, I've never had a walk with Jesus. Today, you can start. Just step in the aisle. 
and we will pray with you. And then if you're here and you need prayer, there's an ailment, there's a condition in your body or your mind, or you just, you're struggling with whatever that is. I'm not going to ask you what that is because I can't do anything with that. But can I tell you who can? God can. Can I tell you who fix that? God can fix it. And he's no respecter of persons. He just don't fix it because you're saved. No, let me tell you, God fixed a whole bunch of stuff for me before I ever got saved because he is God. The Bible says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. If you're here this morning or watching, to help you with that. Just stand in the aisle and we're going to pray. I'm not laying hands on anybody because we're in a pandemic. But perhaps you have a need. I personally have a need. My father is blind and, and just came home out of the house. Lord, we're praying about blood infections, oh God. In the name of your son, Jesus, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we rebuke every sickness and disease and uncleanliness that will war against our body, our soul, and our mind. And Lord, I am speaking healing in this place. Lord, I'm speaking resurrection in this place. Lord, I am speaking name of your son Jesus whom the son has set free free indeed and Lord I'm asking that you free us from all manner of sickness and deliver us in our mind Lord I'm praying for mental health Father by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm praying for mental health in the name of your son Jesus Amen right now I'm going to give you an opportunity. Whatever it is that's on your heart and your mind, ask the Lord for that. Just say it together. Father, will you help me with? And your with is whatever it is for you. Say, Father, will you help me with? And then you just whisper that desire to the Father. Amen. Amen. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, thank you for your service this morning. And the church said amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Of praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I know they welcomed everybody before we started.
But I want to personally thank you for coming. I, I, I'm, I hope the live stream is still going, if not. But I want to personally thank everybody for coming. If this is your very first time visiting with us this morning, will you lift your hands so we can see who you are, so we can send some love your way? My buddy, is Andrew? Is it Andrew? Andrew, we're so happy to have you. Amen. If it's your first time visiting with us, or maybe you've been here before and you've never filled out a visitor's card and you would like to, it's not required, but if you would like to receive information or the links for Wednesday night Bible study, which are online, uh, we're not back in person on Wednesday yet, but the Bible study online, if you would like to receive the links for Bible study or Sunday morning service, if you text the word welcome, the word welcome to 8475277, it will allow you to just put your name and your number, and you'll receive those text messages. Amen. Um, it allow you to receive prayer requests, and sometimes in the body of Christ, you may have an urgent prayer request that you need prayer for. If you text that, we that will allow us to connect with you and to stay in contact with you. Amen. I also want to encourage all of the women that signed up for the vision board event that we had. Was it last Saturday? that we had last Saturday. We have one more session left that's on the 28th, and that's when we will be putting our vision boards together. If you're interested in participating in that event, although it's the last session, but it's the most fun, you can sign up and still go online and register for that session on the 29th. And if you sign up and register for that session, we will send you the video lesson that we watched during the first session and then I'll reach out to you and you can kind of, we'll tell you what tools and supplies you need to put your vision board together when we come together on Saturday. So that's still available.